I'm going to um, <clears throat> share something with you that God put in my heart in 2006. Um, and I'll let you figure out where that was. But uh, I have never shared this message before. And uh, I did this morning, and wow, I, I, it was just, to me, it was, it was powerful to me. You know, how you talk sometimes, and it comes back to you. But, I'm a, you know, a lot of times uh, we go through life and we think that we've got it, you know, together. And that's what I thought in 2006. I thought I was at the top of everything, you know. Everything was just going just fine. And uh, <clears throat> it was going very well. But uh, then things all went downhill. Some of you know about it, but I'm just going to share this, okay? I don't know if any of you have ever been here in a place like that. But uh, here, you, here you have uh, a gift that God has given us, repentance. Repentance. But this guy finds himself with Santa Claus inside of a cell. And um, repentance, I found out, is a gift from God. It's a gift that comes directly from God. And and you know, that's what we're going to talk about. Here you have a guy sitting in a cell with Santa Claus. Santa Claus is an illusion. Santa Claus is a story. He's a lot of things to a lot of people. He, he gives gifts. He supposedly does things. But you know what? He's not real. He just is not real. Repentance from God is real. But there's a lot of us that are like, we're Christians and, and people are saved and, and, and thinking that maybe they repented, but it's just like being housed up with, with Santa Claus. You know, it's not real. You know that that concept of what religion is, what God is, and all of those things, we all have this idea, we all have these thoughts of what it is. And everybody thinks differently. But there's, there's only one true repentance that comes from God. There's only one. You know, we can think of a lot of things and think of a lot of ways of, of how repentance would work. But there's only one way. There was um, a definition for repentance, a compunction. comes out of Strong's for guilt, including reformation by implication. Reversal of another's decision, repentance. In other words, it's going in a whole different direction. It's, it's leaving things behind. It's leaving the old baggage behind. The old man. The old thoughts. The old habits. The old character defects. The old memories of the results of those things. There's a lot of scarred hearts and souls in this place right now. And some of those scars took place inside of a six by nine. And you know what I'm talking about? And those, and, and those things were in a place where God moved. How many know God moves in, in jail? And God moves into prison. The power of God is very powerful and awesome and strong inside of those places. But you know what? The power of God is very awesome and strong here too. One does not have to go to jail or prison to experience the power of God or the presence of God. Thank God. However, sometimes life gets put on hold. Sometimes life gets, things happen where we can't drop a dime and, and call somebody or try to manage things because it's all taken away from you in an instant. And you look at one wall and you look at the next wall and you look to your right or to another wall and in front of you are a bunch of bars. And you're not going anywhere. You're not doing anything. There's nothing to do. There's no one to call. That's when it's time to look to God. 
And that's when God moves the best. There's some people within these four walls that are still or are in a prison, walking around with Santa Claus or some kind of illusion of what Christianity is or the Word of God is or the Bible is. How big is your God? Some people have a God that's that big, a little midget God. Some people walk around with a Santa Claus God that's going to bring gifts and things are going to drop out of the sky because, you know, I'm, I'm me. But the Bible is very clear and it's the truth. The Bible is the truth. How many know that the Bible is the truth? The Bible, God's word is true. My words are not always true. Your words are not always true. Things we do are not always 100% truth. They should be, but they're not. But the word of God is truth. So when we talk about repentance, leaving things behind, leaving things behind, I'm talking about leaving your pain behind, talking about leaving those memories of things that happened behind, talking about laying it all before the Lord and repenting and going in a different direction. Repentance, repentance. You know, there was, there, there's a, a, a message that was in the Bible. It starts in the beginning of the Bible and goes to the end of the Bible. And Moses talked about repenting. It didn't go too well for him. And the prophets, Isaiah, Jonah, Hosea, all of the prophets, Jeremiah, all of the prophets had a message that was repent. Repent. Israel wouldn't repent, and God gave them chances after chance after chance, and they still did not repent. When they went into captivity, they still did not repent. And then finally God gave them another shot, and they went back to the same stuff again. You know, the message was repent all through the prophets, and what did they do to the prophets? They killed the prophets. Then along comes John the Baptist, and John the Baptist says, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. You know, the kingdom of God is near today for us. But this word repent means a lot of things to a lot of us in different ways. Some people hear the word repent and they go, oh man, I don't, I don't want to hear that. I knew, I, 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 instead of repent, you know what the word I use, I say repaint yourself, repaint. Repaint yourself because the paint you got on ain't looking too good. <laughs> and when you talk to some people about repenting, the, 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 your toes curl up in your shoes like some of you maybe already are doing that. You know, I can't tell if your toes are curled up. I hope you washed them. <laughs> but, but repent, you know, you could like really get freaked out over that. Turn, leave those things behind. Does God view you as some people view you. There's some people on probation here. There's some people on parole here. There's some people who are scarred by those things. And some people are scarred by other things. And all of those things going on. And, and you, you, you know what? You just need to repent of that stuff. The parole officer isn't God. Probation officer isn't God. Even the president, they, they, they may think so. But everybody's going to stand before Jesus someday. Or the Father. Everyone, everybody, it'll get evened out. It's going to get evened out. It's better to be on the right side than on the left side. The one left behind. So, it's talking about repentance, see the arrow in the middle points straight up. Repentance is going to take you to heaven. 
Repentance is going to put you in connection with God. Repentance is going to open up doors that, you know, that were not open before. And, and uh, when you start communicating with God, things just start happening. I'm talking about the miracle life, living in miracles, walking in the miracles of God. It says turn from on the left side and you got some guy running towards sin, towards Satan, towards death. Here's this guy running towards those things. Uh, uh, are you running towards those things? Are you kind of walking towards those things? Are you sitting there with Santa Claus going, you know, I'd rather just believe this fairy tale thing of my existence and what my end's going to be and all like that, you know? Or there's the other side, turn and run towards salvation, God, and life. Repent. Repaint yourself. <laughs> so you got something funny about that thing. I pulled that off the Internet. I, I, I didn't invent that thing. I wish I did. But you notice something about repentance there? It's spelled wrong. Somebody did that. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but it's spelled wrong. And that just further makes me think, you know, there's a repentance that people think is a repentance, but it really isn't a repentance. And we'll get into that in a minute. But repentance bears fruit. When we repent, God begins to work in a different way in our life. When we walk in the repentance of God, oh man, it's, it's not the same. It's just not the same. We'll get into the Bible. Man, it is so weird not seeing Spanish up there. <laughs> I keep going. Oye, como va? Matthew chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 says, but when he saw, well, this is John, I'm sorry, this is John the Baptist. Chapter 3 is about John the Baptist. Here's John the Baptist, and he comes and he's confronting these people. And he says, the kingdom of God is nigh unto you or close to you. And then he says this, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruit, meat, for repentance. When it says meat there, it's not talking about carne asada or Old pork or something. Meat means worthy. Worthy. So you have these Sadducees and these Pharisees that are seeing what's going on, and so they come and they're the religious people. And John just blasts them, and he puts them on blast. He tells them, you know what? You bunch of snakes. Well, I have to tell you that that's the first scripture I ever memorized. You brood of evil vipers, repent and bring fruit worthy of, of righteousness. So when I learned that scripture, I was telling everybody that. That's not a good witnessing tool. But people wouldn't didn't really want to hear that. But I really thought that that was a good thing at that time. But here, John says that. People that are religious, people who got a Santa Claus in their cell, people who are walking around that thinking that this is what true religion is, that this is the way it's supposed to be. And, and, and John is saying, you know what, you need, you need to bring some fruit. Your repentance needs to bear some fruit. It needs to bear some fruit. There's some of us that are locked in in things that are not functional. Dysfunctional life, dysfunctional relationships, dysfunctional world. And the reason that it's dysfunctional is because of a lack of true repentance unto God. Believe it or not, the Word of God really works. The Word of God is really real, 
And the word of God really works. If he says he forgives you, he forgives you. So get up off your knees after you ask for forgiveness and get walking with the one who forgave you. If he says leave all those things behind, leave them behind and get walking with the one who told you to leave them behind. So, but you got these Pharisees over here that really look like religious people. They look like holy people. They got all the little tassels on the side. They've got the, the you, you wouldn't dress like that today. One of those smock things or dresses. If you, came, if you came in with a dress, everybody laugh at you. That's the way they dress. A little box on the head. We talked about this before. Got a box right here with, a, with the commandments there and all of that. And, not, and, and, and just putting on a show. And, and that's what they're doing. But you know what? In every church... In every place where God's people are, there is a remnant there. There's a remnant, a little small group who have not bowed down to Baal. There's a little small group who are seeking God with all their heart. There's a, there's a group of people who aren't playing games. And when those people unite... And those, when those people get together and start praying and worshiping God together, guess what? Explosions start happening. And God starts doing awesome and powerful things. But when people are playing games, when people are, are just putting on, the, putting on the show, guess what? Don't, don't expect anything because you're going to get a, a 15% deal, a little teaspoon of, of God. That's all you're getting. But when, when you do this repentance thing the right way, and we're going to talk about it in a minute, guess what? It, it, you're, you're going now. Now things are happening in your life. Now guess what? They're going to have to go through the power of God to get to you. They're going to have to fight. The demons are going to have to fight angels to attack you. The demons and, and all those are repelled, and the world will make a way because God has his soldier walking forward. Got a lot of things happen. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. One of my favorite scriptures. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. You ever have somebody tell you they're sorry? You know, people tell you they're sorry, but you know they're going to get you again when you're not looking. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. You a dummy. Five minutes later, I'm sorry. Next day, you a dummy. This is over and over again. Well, you know what? I've done that too. I said I'm sorry, and I go back and do the same thing again. Because we're human beings, and, and, and we... We mess up and, and we can't be perfect because there's no one perfect. Somebody in the first service said they were perfect. They're here too. <laughs> He's looking at no, no, she didn't ever say that. <laughs> Stand strong like the scripture said order. Stand strong. So, so uh, but saying you're sorry... You know what? Doesn't really cut it with this repentance thing. Doesn't work. You know, repentance isn't just saying you're sorry. Repentance is turning away from those things. Repentance is, is kneeling down and praying to God and asking God to give you strength to overcome that character defect or that vice or that habit or those words or that language. When, when, when people in church or Christians say, you know what, I just can't stop saying bad words. Well, you get down on your knees and start talking to God for a little while, you're going to stop saying those bad words. I go, you get your heart cleaned up, and you're going to start getting your words in line with, 
with what God wants you to do. And that's, that's the way the whole thing works. No shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. You, there, there's just God. That's it. There's God. The people with the Santa Claus walking around with the Santa Claus in their cell still. With that illusion of what religion is, of what God is, what the Bible is, what the Word of God is. It's, it's, it's these promises that are coming out of the sky. Oh, you know, they can't do that to me because I'm me. You know? Why would anyone do that to me? You know, I, 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 I'm not going to get caught. I don't have to listen to the parole officer. He's off the wall. He thinks he's God. Slide, just crossing the line a little bit and jumping back on the other side. You can't. Guess what? Maybe you get away with that stuff. But you know what? There's a part in your Christian walk that is damaged. There's a, that, that repentance is being violated. The thing that God wants to do in your life is not going to happen because we're, we're trying to play the line. We're trying to take a shortcut. Brothers and sisters, there's, there's only one way, and that, that is to get with God. And get it right. And, and settle out the issues. And talk it out. And, and, and I go to your pastors and, and ask them to pray for you if you got to do that. Or get a brother and, and pray with them. Or, or just stay, kneel down till it's settled. Till it's done. Stay there. You got, say, I'm going to stay here till I starve to death. I did that one time. I'll stay here all night. I went into the church one time. And I opened the door. It was 11 o'clock at night. I went in there and I knelt down and prayed. And I go, I'm not leaving here till this is settled. I'm just going to stay here. I have to stay here till Sunday. It was like Thursday or something. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to stay. I'll die right here because I was tired of it. I was done with it. And, and that's what we got to do sometimes. We got to do that sometimes. For godly sorrow work with repentance to salvation. The fruit of godly sorrow brings you into salvation. You can take that a couple ways. Salvation of your soul, salvation of the issue that you're dealing with right now. You're not happy? Oh, well. So you're not happy where you're at? That's, that, the Bible tells me you can be happy wherever you're at. You can be joyful in prison. I know that's true. I was joyful in prison. I had to be watching all over the place, but, but I was joyful. You know? If, if, if you don't have that, that's your own fault because you got stuff that you have not settled out with God yet. There's some things that need to, that, that need to happen. You need to deal with those issues. And, and, and if you don't, well, okay, so you're not that happy. You're still going to go to heaven maybe. Kind of, sort of. But, but you don't have the abundant life. You don't have the things that God is wanting to give to you in this life. And you go, well, I don't need them. I don't need The reason that he's giving them to you is because you have a son or you have a daughter or you have, you have a, a cousin or you have an aunt or you have an uncle, somebody who needs Jesus. And God wants to use you with those people. God wants to use you, but he can't use you or me when we're not in a repentive state. Believe me, I know the difference between my, when my heart is right and when it's not. When my heart is right, I have felt the, the Spirit of God just flow like waves when I'm talking to just a person. My biggest joy is doing little Bible studies. I've always loved small Bible studies because it's just like it's, if, if you go to a Bible study, everybody who's there wants to be there. Nobody made them go there. So they're there because they wanted to be there, and they had to make a special effort to be there. So guess what? Their heart is going to be more open when, when you're when you're doing that, when you're together. But when you, you have a church setting like this, some of you guys are mandated to be here, so you're going, oh, well, here it goes. You know, that bean-eating Mexican again over there talking. 
What, what, what time is he going to be done? Or, or, you know what, I'm tired. I don't feel like going today. You know, and all these things that people think. When it's women, you know, I don't know if you know this, but women who have little kids, God bless them. Sometimes they take their little two-year-old and they're trying to come to church and the two-year-old takes a dump in the diaper on the way. And, and they can't walk into church with that smelly load. So there they are in the car on the freeway while somebody's driving trying to change that diaper on the freeway trying to get to church. And when they get there and, and then Sylvia says, lift up your holy hands. Well, they don't feel like they're that holy. We got to get past all those things. Got to get past all that. So you got, for godly sorrow worketh repentance and salvation, not to be repented of. What happens is when, when we repent, when we truly repent, God takes us out of those situations. He helps us go through those situations. And, and, and in a victorious way. I'm not saying that everything is going to be rosy and everything's going to be beautiful. But it's kind of like this. I've always thought of it like this. Sometimes some really bad things happen. And you see these sharp edges on this paper, this piece of paper. What ends up happening is God just sort of folds them up like that. And, and just keeps folding up those edges as he's working in your life. Oh, I'm doing something I never did before. And, and then as he's doing that, all these edges are getting folded so they don't, they're not so prickly anymore and life isn't so painful anymore. And the things that were hurtful so much aren't so hurtful anymore. Why? Because we're walking with God and we realize he's with us. And, and you know what? We're going we're gonna to overcome and we're going to win. That's, that's what happens. The fruit of a true repentance is salvation. The fruit of one of those other kind, the I'm, I'm sorry kind, works death. Death. Works a negative effect in your life. A dysfunction in your life. I determined, I determined while I was out there in the parking lots for a couple years that I was not going to allow dysfunction in my life. I wasn't going to allow dysfunctional people in my life to be a part of my personal life. I determined that none of that was going to take place in my life. Every one of you can leave the program and graduate and whatever and go find someone who is dysfunctional just as you are or were and you'll fall right back into this cycle that's all messed up and your life will be messed up and you may not even go to church maybe and things like that. But a person who is walking in repentance, a person who is walking with God, a person who is seeking God's will, a person who is looking for the fruit of the Spirit and other people will, will have a world of people around them, or their world will be like that. Thieves hang around with thieves. Killers hang around with killers. Drug addicts hang around with drug addicts. And drunks hang around with drunks. And people of God hang around with people of God. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. So, today... If, if what I'm saying or my person, myself, you go, hey, man, I, I can't handle that guy. Forget that guy. He looks like Edward James almost. I don't need that guy around here. <laughs> so, you're thinking things like that. Well, you know what? You're thinking wrong because God thinks I'm pretty. You got to repent. You got to repaint yourself. <laughs> so, we have a problem. And now I'm, I'm summing this up. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm ending it now. Okay. I know you go, this, is, this was a short freeway, but 
Well, we're, we're ending it now. What are we going to do? You're sitting there, and, and you got them shoes on. They're saying, oh, me, oh, my. You know what? I got some messed up things in my life. My way of thinking is messed up. You know what? I can't shake the things that have been done to me. I can't shake the things I've done. I got this person in my life that's out there that I don't know what they're doing, what, what they're thinking. I don't know if they took off with somebody else. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You can't shake that. You know what? You better shake that. Because God's, God wants to deal with you with the here and now, right now. What's going on in your heart? A lot of that other stuff out there, it'll get settled when it gets settled. God will handle it. He, he, you, you, you walk with God and you get everything in line with his word, everything in line, your spirit in line with God and your spirit in line with his word. And you know what? God will handle it. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Let me tell you something, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm not telling you this so, so you can understand where I'm coming from, all right? My dad and I have been talking about this a couple of days. That's why it's coming up in my mind, and I, go, I guess i got to let it go. It's better when, when I dump a load on you guys, then I feel better. <laughs> I knew a preacher would get mad at his wife, and he'd yell at the people. But that's not the case here. We, my dad and I believe this. There's a heaven and there's a hell. There's really a heaven and there's really a hell. And the people that are in our family, because my dad has seen a lot of people not be here anymore. He's been around a little bit. He's at least 35 years old. <laughs> and, and, he, and most of the people that he's known are either in heaven or they're in hell. And we're not trying to figure out which one. But we have family members that we love very much and cared for very much. And somebody brought this up at the Bible study. I even forgot about it. He said, when your mother was dying in her last moments, you were with us, preaching to us. You were with us, and you were praying for us, and you were with us in the church service, and your mother was dying, and you knew it. And when your brother died, 15 minutes later, you were with us again. And we didn't even know that your brother died. But you came and you preached this great message, and after it was over, he told us that he had died. We were all surprised. And the list goes on. And what I'm trying to say about this is, do we believe in the word of God or don't we? Do we believe in repentance? Do we believe that God saves souls? Do we believe that God transforms lives? Do we believe that God can change you? Amen. Do, this repentance thing is not something that you can take it or leave it. This repentance thing is a matter of life and death for you and for me. And sometimes it, I, I fail it, but I got to get back on it. And sometimes I'm not all that good, but you know what? I better get back in line again. That's being a human being. Welcome to the human race. You know, we're all in the same boat. That's why I need you and you need me. That's why I need to be where I'm supposed to be and you need to be where you're supposed to be. That's why I came back here because if I didn't come back here, I would be running from God and the calling of God. And the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance and I did not want to be haunted till the end of my days and, and give up my last breath saying I should have gone back back in 2010 or 11 or whenever I got here. So we all got the same deal. 
We're all on the same program. What you gonna do? I'm gonna invite the people to, to sing because I'm not that good to come up. We're gonna give you a shot. We'll give you a chance. This is your time now. I don't know what you believe, but I believe that when you come forward, it doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't make me feel like something or somebody. It does something for you. There's something about walking from from this place to here. I can't explain it. There's something about submitting to authorities or, or people that God installed before you like, and, and having them pray for you. I've had to do it many times. I've had to do it a lot of times. I've seen people that are ashamed to do it. I've seen people who should be doing it and won't get up. And God is calling them, and they won't do it because somebody's looking at them or so they don't want anybody to know or whatever. We used to have very large altar calls, hundreds of people in those altar calls, and we'd see, we'd see these pastors from other churches sneak in because they wouldn't go to their own altars or, or leaders in other churches, and we'd see them there. Why couldn't they go to their own church? Because they've got a Santa Claus in their cell. That's why. So follow the Spirit of God. Don't look to the left or to the right. Pastor comes up here and prays and, and whoever else. Just let God do what he's going to do. We already see, we've already seen what you can do with your life. What I can do with my life. Let's see what God will do. Sometimes it needs just a little nudge. Just a little adjustment, a little tune-up. Doesn't mean you're all that bad. That's all I got for you. Amen.